Hey, my Ray Bays, it's your girl Rachel, and I am back with another video. Welcome back to my channel. Guys, man, I don't even know where to begin. As you guys read by the title below, it's happening. Um, this is going to be my fibroid story and my fibroid journey. Basically, where I've been. So, before we get into that video, make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. Be sure to hit that bell so you'll be notified every time your girl posts a new video. And when you click that bell, make sure you click to all so you'll be notified every time I post a video. Not just sometimes. Also, before we get into this video, I just want to make a disclaimer. This video will be very graphic. I will be talking about blood, tumors, women's stuff. And if you guys are not into women's stuff or if you guys are screen, screenish, I think, then I wouldn't be sad if you clicked off this video. It's going to get a little bit graphic. I'm just so happy to be back on here with my people. This will be the story about where I've been, why even I've been inconsistent with YouTube, I guess. Um, but I want to take you guys on this journey with me. So this full journey will be documented. Um, yeah, so where do I begin? <laughs> Y'all, it was a real struggle for me to even, uh, to even get ready to, you know, do this video. I tried to do my hair. I tried to do my makeup, but it's, it's just not... I don't have that and I had to come to grips with myself that this is like the real honest the true raw journey like I don't have to get on camera with the full glam and the makeup and how used how people are used to seeing me because I'm really going through something right now and that's just the reality of it all so this is the real raw me y'all I throw on a wig I throw on a hat yeah because I want to I it's it's more to document just this part of my healing journey. I'm going through a healing altogether, physical, mentally, emotionally, all of that. But we're going to start with my fibroid journey because I will be healed physically really, really soon. I found out back in 2019 that I had fibroids. When I found out that I had fibroids, they were really small. They were like the size of a golf ball. And my doctors at that time told me not to worry about them. So I didn't. Fast forward, if you guys don't know what fibroids are, they are uterine tumors, well, uterine benign tumors. Benign means they are non-cancerous that grow on the lining of the outside of your uterus or on the inside of your uterus. I don't know where they come from. A lot of women in my family has had them. I personally feel like they're genetic for me because I've tried everything before I fin finally settled for surgery. And nothing worked so, so my doctor told me not to worry about them she told me that they wasn't going to bother me that was a lie so fast forward to the end of july of 2022 i went to the doctor for my normal pap smear and my doctor told me that she felt a mass yes a mass like when your doctor tells you that like that very scary a mask so i immediately called my mom she made me do blood work i called my mom so i know that they found a mask in my uterus and that my doctor said that this mask was in my uterus enlarged stress stretching out my uterus as if i was five months pregnant i'm like well that's a pretty big you know familiar with the word fibroid but i guess she didn't want to say exactly what it was because we have not had ultrasound or anything like that so she set me up with my ultrasound and she took my labs oh yeah i went for my ultrasound took two days for all that stuff to come back two days later i went to six flags i'm telling you guys this story for a reason because god is good my journey is a story as well and if someone even come to christ based off of my story this with this illness I, I know for a fact that only God is the one who's carrying me through this because I've been at death's door so many times through this journey but God God is good today is a good day <laughs> so I went to Six Flags two days later and when I was at Six Flags my daughter and I tried to go get on the first ride that we 
you know, that we wanted to get on. And she was just like, mom, you know, something don't feel right. Something don't, something isn't sitting right with me ever. So we did not get on that ride. Then we came up to another ride that I wanted to get on. And um, I said, yeah, something is not feeling right. Like we should not get on these rides. And my daughter was like, yeah, I haven't been feeling it today. So we didn't get on that ride. And then my friend, my friend whom I went to Six Flags with, she was like, friend, you know, you ain't been on a ride since you've been here. Come get on this last ride with me and Isaiah. So I'm just like, okay. We get up there. She was like, friend, something just ain't sitting right. Like, no, we're not getting on the rides. I said all that to say. I got a call from my doctor the next day. She calls me. She lets me know they were fi they are fibroids she also tells me everything else look good and then she started asking me questions like are you feeling weak are you feeling tired are you drained and i'm just like uh no no and no i feel perfectly fine i feel great honestly like first of all 2022 was one of the happiest years of my life like I was going through a healing mentally from a situation the whole time i'm about to go through a healing physically it's like you don't feel weak you don't feel like tired i said no i feel great she was like well unfortunately you're not great i need you to get rushed to the hospital right now she was like your blood is so low you could collapse at any moment she collapsed your heart could go into cardiac arrest because your heart is over pumping you know she started giving me the speech like say no more because why i don't play about me me and my daughter go to the hospital. I go into the hospital. I'm talking just like this. Hey, I'm here to get a blood transfusion. My doctor sent me and they looking at me like I'm crazy. Looking at me like, what? Yeah, she just told me to come here and get um, a blood transfusion. They was like, you look perfectly fine. I said, I feel perfectly fine too. Like nothing is wrong with me, <laughs> you know? And I'm like, So they draw my blood and then eventually they get me back to the doctor. The doctor lets me know that he was gonna go double check my blood count or my levels, I guess to make sure that I need the blood transfusion because he couldn't believe how I was acting. He couldn't believe that I didn't look tired. He couldn't believe that I wasn't weak. He just could not believe this. I'm like, I'm, I'm perfectly fine. So he went to check, he comes back and he says, yeah, Miss Grayer, your doctor was right. You need the blood transfusion. He said, your blood count is a 4.8. So after the doctor told me like, yeah like your blood you need a blood transfusion I said wow that's crazy because no i don't feel weak no i don't feel anything because i went to six flags yesterday he like you went to six flags yesterday i said yes i went to six flags yesterday he was like did you get on any rides i said no he was like thank god i said what do you mean by thank god he was like your blood is so low if you would have got on any ride your heart would never been able to take like all that excitement of that ride. Like you would have never made it out of Six Flags. All those times where we're like, something don't feel right. Something don't feel right. That was God the whole time talking to us like, no, like protecting me. That was just crazy. Like I was this close y'all like to getting on any ride. Like, Man, I'm just like, okay. So he's like, yes, we're going to have to give you two units of blood, which is going to be five hours. I'm like, a blood transfusion? He's like, at first I was scared because I never had a blood transfusion before. I never been through a blood transfusion before. I didn't know what type of effects it was going to have on my body. I was nervous that there wasn't going to, like something was going to be wrong with the blood. But then as time went on, I just start talking to God. The weapon formed against me shall prosper. God has not given us the spirit of fear, you know, like speaking my faith talk, like, you know, because at the end of the day, I'm a child of God and I know God got me covered. You know, <laughs> I'm that girl. I call my mom and my mom, I'm getting a blood transfusion. So they tell me like after blood transfusion, I'm supposed to feel so energetic. I'm supposed to have all this energy. I'm just supposed to, you know, I felt even more tired. I felt um this i guess maybe because like i was going so long without the blood now that they replenish me and now when it leaves i guess i'm feeling the side effects of everything i'm not sure but then i started to lose my hair yes fibroids make you go through hair loss because it causes anemia which makes you go through hair loss for anyone who know me i've always had long pretty hair I was, so that was really scary to me and these are things that the doctors tell you not to worry about. Oh, don't worry about the tumors because they're benign, as in they're not cancerous, but they still have the same symptoms. So if a doctor tell you that, you know, 
is benign and don't worry about it or whatever, look out for you. Do what's best for you and your body. This end of the day, it's only you who knows what's going on with your body. My hair, and I will insert the pictures right here somewhere around here. Y'all, my hair, I was, my hair start coming out in clumps. And even today, I thickened it up because you guys know I'm a cosmetologist, so it's not hard. I know what to do, but it's still a scary situation, even though you know what to do, right? So I took my hair down and my hair started to shed again. And it's just a really discouraging thing because it literally sheds from the root, like strands, like clumps. Like it's, the, it's scary. You'll see it right here. I'm inserting the videos. It's the scariest thing to see. All 2022, for the rest of 2022, once I found out that there were fibroids in my business, I carried Tylenol with me everywhere. My periods start getting heavier. So let me just tell you guys the symptoms that you're gonna that you would deal with um, if you are diagnosed with fibroids. One, you're going to deal with the unusual growths in your stomach. Like you're gonna look pregnant, and there's no way around it. Number two, it's gonna cause you to have really really bad cycles menstruals and that's something you have to be aware of because that causes you to be anemic with anemia you're going to experience hair loss you may crave ice a lot i mean you can experience hair loss everybody don't experience hair loss with anemia so you, i experienced hair loss um i've also been losing weight some people say they gain weight but i've been losing weight um and i'll get to that in a minute that cramps the cramps are unbearable. Also, your menstrual cycles will be longer, like long, like seven days plus long. And I'm not talking about go away and come back. I'm talking about straight through, straight through. I want to say all of 2022, like after I found that I had fibroids all the way like up to the end of 2023, I was just managing the pain. I was in pain at work. It wasn't a pain that wasn't manageable. I would just carry around like my Tylenol. Tylenol isn't good for you either. In the 2023, I went to Houston for New Year's Eve and I had a flare up. It was the worst pain of my life. It was just excruciating. It was a bad cramp thing. I don't know. It was it was just so bad and I, at that time i didn't even know what that pain was i really thought it was gas y'all drinking every ginger ale around me trying to burp <laughs> that ain't no black people stuff we gonna go get the ginger ale okay but none of that was working and then i haven't gotten that pain anymore and the end of february i saw a youtuber i think her name is jessica something jessica i know she passed away because her doctors misdiagnosed her so that really terrified me and i'm just like you know what let me go to the doctor to make sure you know what's going on end of april i said i mean at the end of february i scheduled my doctor's appointment my doctor's appointment was set for april 1st okay before i went back to her she had me do another ultrasound for the appointment to see how much larger my fibroids have grown now at this time now I go to my doctor's appointment my fibroid is now 16.5 centimeters so that's like the size of a small mango or orange or whatever she's like i i have two options for you she's like either birth control or surgical removal so i immediately said surgical removal i don't plan on having any more children i don't have the desire to have any more children and this is not like it's just not me my daughter is about to be 18 years old i don't have a desire to start over um i have a dog who have any more kids I always dreamed of adopting a child and giving back to the community and just taking a child in as babies coming out of this body absolutely not so with the surgical removal but now she changed her mind talking about some well i have to make sure that the doctors will do it because you're so young you're only 34 then i have to um do a b c and d she was like you have to try everything you have to try everything for them to approve the hysterectomy basically like she was basically telling me that i had to try all the steps you know trying to stop it and i'm telling her ma'am i have tried everything i've tried holistic steps i even went to a holistic doctor she tried something for me it didn't work like i tried everything clean eating juicing everything you could think of just steady growing so i do stress a lot sometimes and for a fact that stress contributes a lot to my fibroids growing and i stay super thirsty too
So she's like, all we have for you is surgical removal and hysterectomy. Like, you gotta try this birth control. You have to try it so they could decide it at least. So I'm like, man, whatever. Come on. Give it to me. Because I didn't want to be all in birth control because I want the side effects of birth control. I model. I, I don't want to gain weight. I don't. I just didn't want the side effects of birth control. I never been on birth control. I never had a pregnancy scare in 17 years. So she put me on birth control depot shot. That's supposed to last for three months. When I got put on this birth control, experiencing all pregnant symptoms, like everything made me nauseous. I was experiencing headaches. I was throwing up. And then on top of that, she sent me back to the ER for another blood transfusion because she saw that my labs was low. So now I'm tired. I'm fatigued, throwing up. Then, um, what else? I came on my period and, and it was like a heavy flow for like two days. And then that stopped. I was confused. So then now my bleeding stopped for almost a month, right? She tells me to come back to the doctor. So this time I'll take my mom with me because my mom don't play about me and I don't play about her. And she worked in the medical field and she know what she's talking about. And not only that, she been through this before with her own self. So go back to the doctor. Now this is where the story starts to get crazy. We go to the doctor. Pretty much my doctor comes in and she says, hi. So what do we have here? And she's just like rushing through the appointment. And she's like, oh, I see you have very big fibroid, very big fibroid, very big. Like all I have for you is surgical removal of birth control. What do you want to do? At this point, I felt not heard one, not cared for two. So why don't you remember my last visit? We remember that you already put me on the depot shot. So would you offer that to me again, right? So I, I tell her like, hey, I want the surgical removal. I'm not trying to do all that. Like you already gave me the depot shot two, three weeks ago and that has not been working at all. Like not one bit. I've been sick, went up, um, bloated. It made me so bloated. Y'all, my stomach was so big. I had to come back in three weeks because she wanted to perform a biopsy on my on my tumors to make that it was no cancerous anything because of mom's history. So I pay, that, that's, that's understandable. Mom is like, listen, we want to go with the surgical option because I'm looking at my daughter's life. I'm looking at the quality of her life just go down because she's been sick and it's getting worse. Like every menstrual was getting worse and worse. I started, I went from having a menstrual once a month, once a month to three times a month to not even, sometimes not even stop bleeding. My mom was just like, it, something has to be done. She was like, okay, well. I'm gonna have to justify and sit in front of a board to try to justify to them why I'm giving someone so young a hysterectomy. So mom comes out and said, hey, well, I have to have my hysterectomy at 28. So if you have to tell them that, let them know that, that this is a genetic thing like we're going through. Like when other women in my family dealt with uterine issues, you know? <sighs> my medicine's starting to kick in. I'm getting a little sleepy. So, okay, well, lay down on the table. So. I lay down on the table, goes in, and I'm, I'm a little nervous because I never had a biopsy before. I was, it was gonna hurt, I didn't know. So goes in with her things and she's goes in and when she do the first little, or the clip or whatever she take, she, she gasps for air, like, <gasps> like, <gasps> like that. And, and when she does that, I, what? Like, it's so much blood coming out of me. Saying, oh my God, it's so much blood, it's so much blood, it's so much, look at my mama, like, <laughs> Am I dying? You know what I'm saying? Over there, like, and so it's just like so much going on. So she's like, now the doctor is like, yes, yes, yes. She gives, she needs a hysterectomy. Yes, I. But then she started looking at my mom, like telling her, like they're gonna have to make my vagina shorter and do all that. My mom, like, we don't care. Nobody's going in there, <laughs> cause my mama know, baby. The I be on clink clink. Okay, baby, I care about my life. Okay, I got more work to do. God have more work for me to do. I'm getting up from the table. The nurse comes over and she gives me a pad. And the doctor's like, oh, she should be stopped bleeding in a couple hours. She's just going to spot. Like, she should be okay. But the look on her face is kind of worried. Like, she knew that I wasn't going to stop bleeding. Now I'm at home and spotting. Five hours later, it falls. So my mom, like, mom, the doctor lied. Like, I'm on my period, kind of. So I was like, okay, let's give it to the morning if it does stop bleeding or whatever, whatever. A couple of days later, we ended up going back to the emergency room. They wouldn't do anything. They just said it could be cause of, I don't know, levels wasn't low. They didn't think I was hemorrhaging. So they 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 really didn't do nothing but send me back home. They off a tire and all. They told me because it damages the liver and I was taking too many. <laughs> so to show you how much pain I've been in, the bleeding never stopped. 
I, then I went to work and then I started experiencing like horrible cramps. The bleeding is still going. My next doctor's appointment was May 2nd. My next doctor's appointment, because she referred me to another doctor for the hysterectomy. So the appointment after that was May 22nd. I only got a surgery date. So he gave me a surgery August 15th and he laid the table. And when he laid me down, he could see how big my stomach was when it popped out. And he's just like, oh, poor thing. Like I'm dealing with this. And I'm gonna give you a small incision and he's which i thank god the doctor was talking about they were gonna have to cut me so high because my fibroids are so big i have three large fibroids so one on my right side that stretches all the way to my liver one on this side and then i have one big one that sits in the middle of my uterus like an orange keep that in mind that's where all my pains come from is he finally gave me surgery i'm like thank god not even 24 hours later the next day i wake in excruciating pain like contractions so i couldn't take no tylenol because i'm looking for ibuprofen profen took the pain about if it was a 10 it just took the pain down just a notch like um i dealt with that pain all freaking day it's just so ridiculous it started to make me lose clients at work i i will be fine the later day i'm in excruciating pain i'm not about doing clients i'm not thinking about just trying to be okay you know with this situation it be so unpredictable. Like, you don't know what's what you're gonna be like the next day, and what be crazy. Ain't all that to say. The next day, I felt completely a one. Told my mom. I said, "Mom, I'm going to work today." She said, you sure? I said, "Yeah, I feel I feel amazing. Like, I feel great." Yeah. Less than two hours later, I was corner cramped up in a ball, not move. Like I couldn't even. So I couldn't. It, it kept taking me out. So I couldn't stand up straight. And I couldn't sit down. So how I'm doing this video this long, I could not do this. See, I still can't sit up over hours. So I'm like, okay, I don't know what this is. Like, this is crazy. And the only thing that was soothing my pain was my heating pad. So after I went to the doctor, my mom reached out to my doctor to let him know what was going on. He prescribed me trauma dolls. Nothing was helping. The trauma dolls took the pain. Like, if the pain was a 10, it was taken back down to like a 5. So I was still in a type of pain. And it's like, out of nowhere, it'd be like, ooh, being contracting pains like can't explain it so the one the fiber that sits in the middle of the contractions is causing my uterus to contract because it's so big so my uterus is doing what it's supposed to do as if a baby was in there right and i also have pains in my leg so my fibroid on my right side that stretches all the way to my liver is on my nerves so right leg i always have sciatica pain it's just like with this thing if it's not one thing it's another type of thing and lots other things to happen so i suggest that if you guys have fibroids keep a track on them like can't stress enough and it's frustrating sometimes because everybody just blows it off because they're benign i've lost weight because the tumor sits on my stomach makes me full fast and my digestive system is not good um, it hurt because it sits on my stomach so it's hard my food to digest so i'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do anything that that puts me through pain i'm, I'm so i've been doing a lot of protein shakes smoothies and uh, soups and stuff like that but those pains since may 23rd i just stopped bleeding i bled straight for 75 days since the lady did that biopsy on me <laughs> 75 days I finally go on some days without bleeding and i'm just trying to rest stay up you know get my blood levels up i'm starting to prepare my body for surgery i try to do eating clean because after surgery they're moving forward do you understand like we're going up from here much the story and where i'm at right now I'm dealing with it i'm in it right now i my best i got up early this morning i can do this you know like this stuff messes with you mentally for me it messes with me mentally because it's been so long since someone had to actually like take take care of me what i can but because of this my doctor has made me get off work and I've been dealing with these pains since then. And this is a long time to be in pain. You know, like I am nervous about surgery, but also ecstatic. So tired of being in pain, losing my hair, I'm losing weight. Like, I don't want to be big or nothing, but man, Hondo 50 is not like a Hondo 19, 119. Like my daughter, I know my daughter is scared, like so sleepy. <laughs> say today has been a great day physically pain wise in my abdominal area the only thing i did today is my hair shedding again and that was really discouraging for me because i threw it all back just for it to shed again the say is god is good still and midst of all this god is good and i'm gonna keep him first and i'm gonna stay focused 
you guys have any questions to me about like symptoms or if I missed anything, any questions, any comments, any concerns, make sure you guys comment down below your questions and I will be sure to answer them for you. Keep me in your prayers. Send me nice messages. I've been doing my best to stay lifted. I mean, I just want to tell you guys that there is beauty in healing, beauty in life in general, but to find the beauty in healing because going through a healing can be so hard. There's beauty in healing and I'm just excited to see what's on the other side of all of this, right? And if you guys are new here, welcome. And if you guys aren't, I love y'all. Thank you for keep supporting me. I'm still at 2.19K subscribers. Thank you guys for sticking around and I'm gonna wait to bring you guys along and just can't wait to see what's next. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you guys like it. Hit that bell, y'all. Click that bell. That helps me a lot. It doesn't cost a thing to, you know, click the bell. It don't cost a thing. Comment down below that there is beauty in healing. If you guys are healing from something right now, comment down below what you're healing. If you're going through the exact same thing I'm going through right now, comment down below. I am nervous, but I'm not. I'm ready. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I can't wait to see you guys next time. Bye.